I know. Carrying on with Operation Gadget Man, we're on the second part of chapter seven. The chapter's called Brown and Frightened, and if you remember, Beans has just gone to sleep and she's holding her Operation Gadget Man folder. She's hugging it close to her. Saturday morning turned out to be another beautifully warm day, with hardly a cloud in the sky. Beans quickly had her shower and got dressed. She had a lot to do today and she didn't want to waste a second of it. It was only when Beans came out of the shower that she realised what it was that had been bothering her ever since she'd set foot out of her bedroom. The landing was tidy. No capacitors, no cathodes, no insulating tape, nothing on the landing carpet for her to pick her way through on her way to the bathroom. Gran had been busy. Pausing on the landing, a horrible thought entered Beans' head. She ran to her dad's room. Spotless! She could actually see the carpet, the bed was tidy, and all the knick-knacks that had littered the floor were now in a box in the corner of the room. Oh no, groaned Beans. How was she going to get a set of prints from her dad's right hand now? She wouldn't know which prints were Gran's and which ones were Dad's. She could always fingerprint Gran, but no, Gran would never allow it. I'm going to end up fingerprinting the whole street at this rate, Beans mumbled with annoyance. She looked around the room again. Dad wouldn't be able to find a thing in all this neatness. He was going to hit the ceiling when he saw it. I wonder if any of you feel like that about your bedrooms. Do you like it messy? But you will see it, Dad, Beans whispered, and she went downstairs. As she suspected, the whole house was spotless. Every surface had been wiped and dusted and vacuum cleaned. Every stray nut and bolt had been put away. It's like being in a completely different house, Beans thought, as she sat down for her breakfast. Gran joined her bowl of wheat flakes in hot milk in front of her. Beans wrinkled up her nose at it. Thank goodness Gran didn't insist on her having to eat the same thing for breakfast. Oh, I hardly slept a wink, Gran sighed, as she lifted up her spoon to her mouth before letting the spoon drop with a clatter back into the bowl. She pushed her breakfast away, eyeing it with distaste. Surprised, Beans looked at Gran. I'm not hungry, Beans. Gran said tersely. Beans bent her head. She studied her sausages and beans on toast. She wasn't hungry either. He'll be all right, Beatrice, Gran said. Beans looked up. Her gran was smiling at her. Beans smiled back. Just at that moment, the doorbell rang. Now, who can that be so early in the morning? Gran's eyebrows almost met in the middle, she frowned. I should do that. <laughs> she stood up and went to answer the door. Beans followed her. The silhouette she could see through the glass panel in the front door looked familiar. Gran opened the door. It was Detective Warner. He had on navy blue cords and a light blue shirt and the same leather jacket he'd worn the day before. Hello, I'm sorry to bother you. You must be Mrs Conran, Beans' grandmother? Detective Warner. That's right, can I help you? Gran frowned. Well, we spoke on the phone yesterday. I wonder if I might come in. I'd like a word with Beans, the detective said. You found Dad, Beans said eagerly. Uh, not as such. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Detective Warner craned his neck to see past Gran. Beans, I wanted to talk to you about the induction oscillator. You haven't found my son, Gran questioned. Just what are you police doing? Sitting down, drinking tea and playing cards whilst my son can be anywhere in any condition. We're doing everything we can, madam. If I could just come in, said Detective Warner. Gran took a deep breath. Yes, of course. I'm sorry, she sighed. This way. Beans led the way into the sitting room. Gran stood by the door as Detective Warner stood in front of Beans. 
Beans, did you find any information on the induction oscillator? he asked. Not yet, Beans dismissed. What about Dad? Have you found out anything yet? No, I'm afraid not. We still have him listed as missing, Detective Warner said. Missing? Gran said from behind the detective. Cats go missing. Umbrellas go missing. My son has been abducted. It's a word that means the same as kidnapped. Yes, of course, Mrs Conran, the detective soothed. Hmm, Gran folded her arms across her chest. Detective Warner turned to Beans again. I was just passing this way, so I just popped in off the off chance that you might have found some written details about the induction oscillator, Detective Warner said. It's important that we take custody of all your father's notes and blueprints on his invention as soon as possible. Assuming, of course, that your father doesn't tell his abductors what they want to know. Never, Beans and Gran spoke in unison. That means they said it at the same time. Hmm, have the kidnappers been in touch? asked Detective Warner. Beans shook her head. We haven't heard a thing, have we, Gran? But the kidnappers have what they want. They've got Dad and his indu induction oscillator. Why should they want to get in touch with me or Gran? We're working on a few theories, was all Detective Warner would say. Beans, I want you to contact me if you hear anything from your dad or his kidnappers. Don't forget. And if you find any information on the oscillator, get in touch immediately. You have my phone number. Don't forget now. I won't forget, Beans nodded. Uh, Detective Warner, have the police told other banks or building societies about Dad's oscillator? No. We wanted to get more information about it or speak to your father first, Detective Warner frowned. Why? No reason. Just wondered, Beans shrugged. Gran escorted the policeman to the door. Beans stayed where she was. She couldn't believe that Dad would tell his kidnappers a thing about the oscillator. So what would they do then? Would they hurt him? Gran walked back into the sitting room. Gran? Gran, I'm frightened, Beans admitted with a whisper. Her Gran came over to her, hugging her tightly. So am I, Beans, Gran said. So am I. Gosh. We're about halfway through the book now. We're in quite a dire situation, aren't we? But things are going to get better. Surely this is going to have a good ending. The next chapter is called The Giveaway and we'll start that tomorrow. All the usual messages from me. Sending you lots of love, missing you lots, hoping you're remembering to be good and trying hard with your work and remembering that you're very precious. See you soon. Take care now. Bye bye.